Bethanians, welcome once again to Bethany Virtual Cafe. So for the last time, this is the uh, last part of this three-part uh, video or vlog for our uh, reflection on the Epiphany and also in line with the movie, The Fourth Wise Man. So as we have pointed out in the two series that we had, Artaban as well as Arontis was on a journey, a journey to search for the king. And in the first series, I made mention that as Artaban and Orontes progresses in their journey, they were not freed from uh, certain bumps along the way. For one, they encountered a sick person into which Artaban attended to his needs, making sure that uh, he gets well and that he recuperated before uh, leaving him behind. In that encounter, he was also able to know that uh, Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. On the second clip, we have learned that uh, Artaban and Orontes have spent the last 33 years. Imagine that. Just like the number of years when Jesus was actually uh, here with us in this world uh, doing his ministry. And while uh, Jesus was doing his ministry, Artaban was also um, exerting every means possible that he could give to a colony who confronted him because of their particular needs. And so Artaban stayed on for that long period of time, teaching them to fish, not only giving them uh, everything that he has, but he had taught them to fish and to make sure that they become stable until he decided to uh, finally embark once again on a journey. In the last clip, also we realized that Artaban's father passed and that was such a moving part of the movie, realizing that his father or Artaban's father could no longer be with him and that uh, his father, in fact, died living with the strangers. And so, in this uh, third and final clip, let us try to answer the question, was Artsaban able to find his king? Was he able to find the true star, who is Jesus Christ? Let us watch this final clip. Can we learn from this final clip. The entire celebration of Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus, yes. But together with that, it is also a celebration of light. If uh, you have followed my live stream masses for the Simbangabi, the first day of the Simbangabi, I pointed out in a question uh, what is the color of Christmas? And in that particular day of the Novena, I pointed out that the color of Christmas is no other than the white color. And the white color is symbolical of no other than light. Light which signifies truth, wisdom, and knowledge. And so when we celebrate the Christmas season, it is always a recognition of the true light who is Jesus Christ. And uh, in the uh, story of the uh, three wise men, when we celebrated Epiphany, we all know that uh, they were led by the star towards Bethlehem, uh, towards uh, the manger where Jesus was born. That star signifies or symbolizes the true light who is Jesus. Jesus who draws us closer to him to the light because he is the light and he will dispel the darkness in this world by giving us hope and by giving us his unending and eternal love for mankind. And so we again ask the question, was Artaban able to find the king? 
And the answer is yes. Artaban was able to find the king, but though he was not able to find the king at the very uh, time of his birth, catching up with the three other wise men in order to offer their gifts to the Savior in Bethlehem, but in his own way, um, Artaban was able to find the king in a very special and moving way. As you can see, when uh, Artaban was about to see Jesus, he was like one step behind uh, every event in the life of Jesus. And so Artaban was somehow catching up with Jesus in these events of his life. But then again, he was not fully and able to see Jesus face to face. It was only until his uh, resurrection when finally Jesus um, appeared to him in his resurrection state. Uh, and in that moving encounter, you'll see that Artaban has said to Jesus that, you know, I no longer have presence for you. I have given my presence to those people, my brothers and sisters who were in need of them. So I am so sorry I could no longer give you anything as a gift to you, my Lord and my King. But you know, the answer of the recent Christ was a very beautiful because as he was talking to Artaban, he assured him that, you know, I was able to receive your gift. In the stranger who is in need of food, I receive the sapphire. In the child who was about to be slaughtered by order of Herod, I received your ruby. Finally, in another magi's daughter who was about to pay for the funeral and the burial of his father, I have received the pearl. The pearl which according to you is the pearl of great price and the most precious uh, treasure that you are going to give to me. So there you see, uh, this particular part of the story resounds or resonates the very words in scripture. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you do it to me. Or let us rephrase that. Whatever you do to the least, the last, and the lost of my brothers and sisters, you do it to me. And so as we come to a close to our reflection in line with the three wise men, let us ask ourselves the question, what is your gift to the Savior, to the newborn King in Bethlehem? Of this gift that I am willing to give, how much of yourself are you willing to give as you present the gift to the Savior? God bless us all, Bethanians, until the next reflection.